and welcome to the Absolute Recap Biology Edition, where we aim to maximize your understanding and minimize your need for memorization. Each episode will recap content, skills, and test-taking tips to help you succeed in May. I'm your host, Melanie Kingett, and your recap starts now. Hi, and welcome to the Absolute Recap Biology Edition. Today's episode will recap helicase and the other enzymes involved in DNA replication. Let's zoom out. We're in Unit 6, Gene Expression and Regulation. Topic 6.2, our big idea is information storage and transmission. Most cells inside your body have about six feet of DNA in them. If you uncoil the strands, of course, as a low estimate, you have approximately 10 trillion cells of all shapes, sizes, and types. Is that all? So that's 60 trillion feet or about 10 million miles of DNA within your body. That's enough DNA to stretch to the sun and back over 60 times. Room to stretch out. And your cells need to copy it all, often. Let's zoom in. DNA replication occurs during the synthesis, or S phase, of the cell cycle within eukaryotic cells. In humans, this process is aided by multiple enzymes from multiple origin sites simultaneously at each of the 46 chromosomes. And it's a good thing too, because at a rate of about 50 base pairs per second, it would take over a month to copy a single chromosome. Instead, the S phase takes only a few hours. Beginning with a familiar definition, enzymes are biological catalysts that facilitate chemical reactions in cells by lowering the activation energy. Enzymes reduce how much energy is required for a chemical reaction to occur and thus makes metabolism more efficient. However, the difference in energy from reactants to products remains the same. Enzymes are not used up in a reaction and are substrate and condition specific. Why? Well, why not? Enzymes are made of proteins, each having a unique structure for a specific function. Remember, proteins are polymers made of amino acid monomers. These monomers differ in the chemistry of their R groups, which influences the manner in which the protein coils, bends, and folds. Conventionally, many enzymes end in the suffix ASE and are named after the molecule or molecules they act upon. While there are several enzymes and intermediate steps of DNA replication, not all are specified in the CED. Let's recap DNA replication through the function of those enzymes. Hi there, producer Brad here. I wasn't always what you would call the best student. In fact, a fellow student once complimented me by saying how much my illustration skills had progressed over the course of our first semester philosophy class, where I may or may not have gotten a D. However, I did do very well in all of my online courses, so much so that my grandfather said that maybe I should avoid in-person interactions altogether. But the point is, everybody learns differently, and sometimes all you need to understand a difficult topic is a different perspective. The Absolute Recap live virtual classrooms allow you to collaborate collaborate with AP students from all over the world. Each 90-minute lesson is hosted through Zoom by your favorite podcasting teachers and focuses on specific course topics. Our teachers use visual aids, provide opportunities for student practice and Q&A, plus they give you a downloadable study packet. Our virtual classroom is a great opportunity to review for tests throughout the year as well as prepare for the exam in May. Reserve a seat for one class or book your seat for the year with our virtual classroom bundle and save. Now, back to the recap. First, Topoisomerase. This enzyme relaxes the DNA supercoiling ahead of the replication fork. This not only allows hydrogen bonds to be more easily accessible, but also reduces tension during replication. Keep relaxing. I always liken this process to trying to take off ice skates or combat style boots. Those laces are so tight. And even as you loosen the top, you need to release the tension from the laces nearest the toes to accomplish the task of removing the shoe. What do you and Helicase have in common when changing outfits? You both need to unzip your jeans. The enzyme helicase unwinds the DNA, breaking the hydrogen bonds between nitrogenous base pairs and forming a replication fork at the origin site. Now that the nitrogenous bases are exposed, semi-conservative replication can begin. Each original half of the parent strand serves as a template for new complementary nucleotides to be synthesized. In other words, half of the original strand is conserved 
or saved, during replication, multiple helicase enzymes bind the DNA strand at origin sites, forming replication bubbles and multiple replication forks along a chromosome. Efficiency. The next enzyme involved, I would argue, does most of the work. DNA polymerase. This is important work. As the name implies, this enzyme will have a role in creating the nucleic acid polymer from nucleotide monomers. DNA polymerase synthesizes the new strand in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction, joining new complementary nucleotides to the 3' prime end and proofreading its own work as it goes. A and T with two hydrogen bonds, G and C with three hydrogen bonds. But remember, DNA strands are anti-parallel. This creates a leading strand synthesized in one continuous piece and a lagging strand synthesized in short Okazaki fragments. Two things to take note for DNA polymerase. It always needs a template strand to work off of, and it always requires a short RNA primer to indicate a replication starting point. The last enzyme for today's episode is ligase, the glue of the operation. Ligase will seal any gaps left behind by the now-removed RNA primers and ensures that Okazaki fragments are joined on the lagging strand. Ligase catalyzes a reaction where a 5' phosphate group is linked to the 3' hydroxyl group, forming a seamless sugar phosphate backbone. Time for unit connections. Unit 1, chemistry of life with nucleic acids. Unit 3, cellular energetics with enzymes, and later in Unit 6 for biotechnology, as ligase coupled with restriction enzymes creates recombinant plasmids. All right, what about the exam? Make sure to review diagrams of DNA replication, paying special attention to directionality and the position of enzymes. The entire process is a domino effect of functionality, so be prepared to discuss or predict the effect of an altered enzyme or disrupted step. To recap, DNA replication is a semi-conservative process that involves several enzymes in a series of steps. Topoisomerase uncoils, helicase unzips, DNA polymerase synthesizes, and ligase closes the gaps. Coming up next on the Absolute Recap Biology Edition, Origin of Life. Today's question of the day is about nucleotide structure. When comparing pentose sugars, on which carbon does ribose have a hydroxyl group where deoxyribose does not? For the answer to the question of the day, please follow us on Instagram at The Absolute Recap. That's the A-P-S-O-L-U-T-E Recap. Check out our website, theabsoluterecap.com, for episode schedules, study guides, virtual tutoring, and to sign up for our virtual classroom. The Absolute Recap is produced by Brad Kingett with music by Zach Caruso. Today's episode was written by me, Melanie Kingett. Thanks for subscribing, and don't forget to rate and review wherever you get podcasts. Time's up, pencils down. Thank you for listening to the Absolute Recap Biology Edition. AP is a registered trademark of the College Board. Copyright 2020, Absolute Recap, LLC, all rights reserved.